How's it going guys? Today we have a little bit of a different video. Usually I'm gearing my videos towards the Instacart shoppers, but today we're actually gearing this video towards the Instacart customers. Basically the whole goal of this video is to help customers know how to be the best possible customer to get the best experience with Instacart that they can. There's a lot of things that you guys might not know yet about Instacart if you're new, so this video is for you and if you're a shopper you guys still might find this helpful because we're going to be going over some information that I have kind of have learned over the year that I've been working with this company. And if you're a customer, this is this is geared towards you and I hope it helps you as much as possible. Just a, a quick disclaimer, I know that 99% of customers are awesome and they just appreciate what we do for them. And I appreciate what you guys are doing for us. You guys are giving us a pretty awesome job where we just get to go grocery shopping and call that work. I just want that to be clear because this video might seem a little negative whenever I go over some of these topics, but it's not how I mean it to be. I just want to make sure that the customer knows what some of us shoppers are dealing with and so they know how to be the best customer. All right, with all that out the way, let's get to the very first topic. Make replacements. Instacart kind of advertises this to be like a, a hands-off shopping experience and it can be that way if you guys make some replacements because technically if we show you guys the replacement and you guys don't actually like approve of it we're supposed to just refund it now personally if i see something that's almost identical and the customer is not responding i will just go with it but if it's a flavor difference i always just refund so that is where making replacements can really help us out because i don't want to get a flavor that you might be allergic to so i'm just going to refund it right now with the low stock this is very important and it speeds up the shopper which means the shopper can finish your batch sooner get it to you sooner and get back onto the next batch even quicker so that they can make more money or just get home faster. Replacements are very important, that or just click the thing that says refund if you can't find it. Please only use this if you guys actually want a refund because I know a lot of customers do this so that shoppers don't make replacements on their own and then what happens is we'll pass that aisle and the customer will send us a text a little bit later and ask us for a replacement even though they selected a refund. It just slows us down. All right, so something that I found super helpful was when people leave notes on their produce items. If you guys want an avocado to be ripe when you get it, let us know. Or you can even say that, hey, I want one ripe avocado and some avocados that aren't quite ripe so I could use one today and then use another one like a week from now. Same goes for like bananas or anything perishable. And sometimes it's a good idea to leave these notes because not all shoppers are great at produce like me. So you guys might be dealing with someone that doesn't know the difference between a ripe grape and a, a non-ripe grape. So the instructions are there to help you and the shopper. All right, delivery instructions are super helpful and they kind of help just confirm that we're at the right house. Being at the right house is very important because if you're delivering to the wrong house, someone might think that you're trying to break in or maybe that other house has dogs. You just have to be careful and make sure you're actually at the right address when you're dropping things off. So maybe just simply be like, hey, I have a blue car in the driveway. Or if your house is pink, just be like, hey, I'm the one with the pink house. It's super helpful. Another like tag onto this is if you guys want your items at your porch or at the garage door, just let us know because I do a lot of my shopping at Costco and I know a lot of people that order Costco, they prefer to just leave it by the garage because they're dealing with like water softener or a ton of water and that's where they keep it anyways and it's all heavy. So it's better to keep it by there. So just let us know because we'd be happy to leave it wherever you want to make it more convenient for you. All right, next up is a pretty big pet peeve of mine. If you guys are an Instacart customer, please don't add a ton of items mid-order. If you guys are gonna add items, add it at the very beginning, but if you guys are gonna add a ton of waters and if you guys live in an apartment, you guys might get your order canceled because some people just can't climb up three stories of floors to deliver you 10 waters. But if you guys forget like a couple things, add it at the very beginning, please. And if you guys add it in the middle of the order, it really affects our time to shop. Basically, if you guys add like produce and we already passed produce, we're on the other corner of the store, it's gonna add a lot of time to our shopping and in return, it's gonna give you a slower experience and we're gonna get back to batches slower. So it's gonna cost us some money and it's something that I would avoid at all cost. 
but if you guys just need one or two things it's not a big deal just don't add 15 things mid-order it, it drives us crazy all right next up is a, a kind of sensitive topic and it is the no tippers now i personally i know a, a no tipper that is basically in my neighborhood and she doesn't leave a tip beforehand she likes to give a tip afterwards this lady is super sweet and she's awesome to shop for, but most people don't know that she does tip afterwards, so they never take her order. No tippers are the most frequent to report fraud. They're the most frequent to say they never got the item. And a lot of no tippers live in apartments and they won't give you gate codes and it just makes the shopping experience very poor for us shoppers. So if you guys are tipping afterwards, you guys might wait a little or if you guys eventually keep doing this over and over, you guys might find someone like me that starts to make the connection that, hey, if I see that pin at that location, this is the lady that tips afterwards. I'm happy to take her order, and it always sits there for a long time, so I always have a lot of time to take her order. But yeah, tipping afterwards makes more sense realistically, but I'm just letting you guys know if you guys don't tip right off from the bat, you guys might have some problems and delays. All right, next up, please stay near your phone if you can. If you guys are working, it is what it is. But if you guys have the opportunity, stay near your phone because sometimes Instacart goofs up. Recently, I've had Instacart show me two wrong items where they gave me the, the wrong air filter to search for and then I delivered it to the customer after trying to confirm it. And they're like, yeah, you gave me the wrong uh, filter. So one star review for you and no tip. They took the tip away. I try to confirm the right air filter with them because something fishy was going on on Instacart's platform and they just couldn't confirm it. And in the end, I did everything right and I got tip baited basically, it sucked. So being able to be near your phone is really helpful just in case there is a problem or we're trying to like figure out what you want specifically if Instacart shows us the wrong thing. All right, next up, a lot of people don't know this, but most of the time Instacart shoppers are shopping for at least two people at once. And it can be up to three, especially if you guys are doing Costco. Almost every order I do at Costco has two customers. So if you guys had a really small order and your shopper is taking forever, it's probably because Instacart paired you up with a huge order for some reason. This kind of sucks because I've had this happen several times where the small order tipped me extremely generously and then I had this huge order that didn't tip at all apparently and I would have to deliver the huge order first and then deliver the, the gracious customer and um, yeah, it, it's just a little weird if the customer doesn't know that and that's why things can be delayed sometimes because we're shopping for multiple people it's not our choice, it's Instacart. All right, next up is coming down to unloading. If you guys are a business, we are not expected to stock your shelves. This is just something that everyone needs to know. This is not a freight hauling company. I'm sorry to say it. With that being said, I do it every time because I'm worried that I would get a bad review because people just don't understand this. These are mostly for people ordering like 20 waters or 20 waters and then 10 Gatorades. There's one company that I actually enjoy shopping for and they always order like 40, 60 gallons of milk or something like that and they always help me unload. I appreciate that so much because it's a very heavy order, but if you guys are just like a normal customer, like we do not expect you to help unload. That's coming from me, and I'm sure a lot of people would agree with that, because if you're tipping us and paying us and using this app, it, it's not expected. But if you guys are using us to order 80 gallons of milk, let's just uh, be realistic here. The help is nice, and I appreciate the people that do help me. So if you guys are watching this video, thank you. All right, if you really wanna be nice to your shopper, good reviews mean the world. You guys are able to give us like at least five different reviews. You can give us a thumbs up on like the quality of items and if we follow the instructions and a, a few more things like that. And then the actual review is the most helpful. Obviously, if your shopper did a crap job, don't give them a good review. But if they did do a good job, this helps us out a ton. All right, I'm not too sure if customers know this, but bad reviews can affect our income. Instacart says that people with better reviews might see batches sooner. And this is huge because if you're a second late to seeing a batch, you guys might not get it. And with that being said, this can ultimately cost you a lot of money. Just to put things into perspective, if you guys get one four star review, it might take you up to a month to get rid of that. And you guys are gonna be shopping at a lower rating for up to a month, seeing batches potentially later than other people. And the amount of money that this could cost a shopper is significant. So bad reviews should only be used for people that deserve it, not for low stock at Costco or Walmart or where, wherever you're shopping. 
I would prefer for you to take some of your tip away than to give me a bad review, and that is just me. But my least favorite is when you take the tip away and give me a bad review for something that wasn't even my fault. Yeah, that, I'm still salty. One second, my dog's going crazy. Say hi to my dog that's been barking. All right, time for the haul. All right, another fun fact. You guys can tip after the fact as well. So if you guys had like a, a person like go above and beyond and you guys just really liked them, you guys can tip even more. So what some people do is they give like an average tip in the very beginning and then they kind of leave it up to the service or the quality of the shopper to determine if they get tip more or less. Or if something happens where you accidentally give us the wrong address and we have to drive extra, this is just one way to kind of make up for that. But uh, ideally, double check your address. Don't do that because we're gonna talk about that in a second. It could be pretty dangerous. All right, next up is a pretty current topic, but understand that stores have low stock. The stocking at stores right now is just, it's bad. And some days it'll be there, some days it won't. It is out of the shopper's control. Today I had to make one replacement and one refund on a huge order, so I didn't think it was a big deal. It was honestly better than most orders. So anyways, I get to their house, I got a weird look from one of their family members right off the bat. I deliver half of the order off, and then I think they thought I was done and I was out of there. While I was returning the rest of it, the person that gave me a weird look started ranting about how annoyed she was that she wasn't gonna have everything for her order. And she also said things like, yeah, I'm just gonna go back to the store and find it myself. And um, I literally sent her pictures of everything that was out of stock. We were texting back and forth. I made an awesome replacement that she requested. And then the one item that we refunded, I showed her a picture of the shelf and the actual price tag for the item. So you, you could see that that's where it was supposed to be completely wiped out. And so whenever I dropped off the rest of the groceries, I heard all that, she extremely rude, thought I was gone and just was talking trash about my shopping skills. I always ask employees before I actually refund things because first of all, it affects our income. It's not in our best interest to refund things because if you left an adjustable tip, then our tip's going down. So that's where you choosing replacements beforehand could be really beneficial and stop these things from happening. But just realize it's not our fault that the store's out of stock. A lot of us actually do a good job and search for your item. There are a few raw apples that will give up and barely even look for your item and just refund it. But the majority are not that way. I just so happen to actually care about my customers and look for the item and ask employees where it's at. And even with that, I was still getting trash talked at the door by a customer. Please don't do that. It ruined my day. All right, next up, please don't ask us to call a different number in the description or the instructions. With Instacart, we basically only have the option to call you, whatever your number is associated with your account, that's what we can call. A lot of people want us to use our personal phone number so that we can actually dial a different phone number. And this is dangerous because a lot of hackers use this to get a hold of the shopper's phone number so that they can hack our account and use it for malicious purposes and to profit on their dime. So that is why we're not really supposed to call customers with our personal number. Plus I've had weird people just start calling me and texting me and basically harassing me once they got my number. It's just something I don't wanna give out. It is my personal number and I just, I don't wanna give it to someone I don't know. That being said, I still do this every once in a while. If the customer is actually really nice and I can tell that they're like a real person with no malicious intents. I'll still do this every once in a while, but it's becoming less and less because I know that there are people trying to hack my account. People have already tried to do this, so it's a it's a big deal. Hand me orders. All right, if you guys are gonna click hand to me because you don't wanna be responsible for theft, then please be at your house. I'm happy to do these orders, but maybe let the shopper take a picture before they actually give you the groceries or something like that because a lot of hand to me customers like to report things missing because there's no picture. And then the shopper just has no evidence that they actually delivered it. If it's a hand to me customer and you guys aren't home, technically we're supposed to go return all the groceries. So this is really only supposed to be used whenever you guys are actually home. So whenever you guys report something is missing or wrong or damaged, the shopper sees it and we get an opportunity to report fraud. We're able to send pictures and explain exactly what happened. So only use this if it's legitimate. Most of the people that have used this against me just report random things missing when I have pictures of it sitting on their porch. We basically get like a big thumbs down, so I'm pretty sure this affects our account in some way, so just be careful with how you use this. Please only use this for legitimate reasons. All right, so the very last topic, 
So my least favorite instructions is please put in my garage. Now there are only a few customers that I will happily do this for and it's because I already know them. I've shopped for them several times so I will happily do that. But the problem is there are a lot of weird people that could try and close us into the garage. We're going into someone's house where we can't see everything or who's in there or things like that. And let's just give two scenarios on how this could be dangerous. Say the wife orders groceries through Instacart. The husband doesn't know. So you're going into the garage, the husband's working on his car or something, and you're just walking into the garage. He has no idea that she placed the order. You guys could get shot. Like actually, like you are trespassing on someone's property at that point and it is very dangerous. So next up, say that the shopper was actually at the wrong property and they walk into a stranger's house or say that you gave us the wrong address accidentally and we walked into someone else's garage, you're asking to get into a lot of trouble and it could be pretty harmful for the shopper. So this is dangerous, but I will do it for a few customers that I really like, but this is something that you guys really shouldn't be asking us to do because I think it is pretty dangerous. All right, so that's basically the video. Like I said, I do not not mean to be negative to the customers. I enjoy doing this job and I get to work with a lot of awesome people, but I just think that this video is gonna be really helpful for people to be the best customer so that they can get the best experience possible with Instacart. If you guys found this video helpful, make sure you guys slap that like button down below, consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys on the next video.